Hello and welcome to Commodore 128 Assembly Language Programming. Uh, today we're going to talk about programming the 80 column chip that's in the Commodore 128 and how to put things on the 80 column screen. Um, there aren't very many games for 80 column because of the complexity of this and how much slower it is to um, put things on the screen, especially in bitmap mode, but there are also some nice features, so I'm going to sort some of that out. Um, the 80 column chip and its RAM are completely separate um, from the 128's main system. You can't write directly to its RAM. It has 16K of RAM, so you go from um, 0 to 3FFF, unless you have one of the 128 um, metal case DCRs, which have 64K, and then it goes on down to FFFF. But this, is, this would be a stock 128. It's divided up, um, and these things can all be moved around. It's all configurable. But normally, um, from 0000 to almost 800 is the display RAM. And this is kind of, this is like the, um, this is like the um, section in the main system for the 40 column screen that starts at 400. When you plug you plug character values in here, they show up on the screen. So there's 2,000 locations here because you've got 2,000 locations on the 80 column screen since it's twice as wide. And they just correspond in order, just like the 40 column screen works. They just correspond in order to locations on the screen. So you can, if you plug a location, you plug a character value in here, then you plug a character value into the very first one at 0000. zero, zero, zero it shows up in the top left corner of the screen. Um, the the thing is, you can't just plug it directly in there. You've got to go through this system that we'll be talking about. From 800 to up to almost 1,000 then, you have what's called attribute RAM. And again, this is 2,000 locations, one for each location on the screen, one for each character on the screen. And with these control is the color. Um, there's four bits that control the color that gives you your 16 colors. There's a flash bit that controls whether the character is flashing. There's an underline bit. Um, there's a reverse bit. And there's a bit that tells it which which character set because this can this can keep track of all 512 characters, both sets of 256. And so there's a bit that tells it which set that's coming from. Then at 2000 down to the end, or to 3FFF, there's the character definitions. And these get copied over from um, the character ROM that uses the same characters that the 40 column screen does but they get copied into this RAM so that the 80 column chip can use them. They get copied over when it's first initialized. And this area here is just unused. And so you have an extra 4K there that you could use to copy extra stuff in place and then move it back and forth. You know, you could have two different, basically you could have, well, three different, well, two different, I suppose, if you want to have Let's say you want to have two screens in memory at once in this in this video memory. You could have a display RAM and attribute RAM for the first screen and then another set for the second screen and you could switch back and forth between them. Okay, so that's how the RAM works. That's where the, the 80 column chip, which is the 8563, it uses that information to build the screen. Now, to access any of that, you've got to go through the registers in the in the uh, 80 column chip. And there's 37 of them from 0 to 36. Most of them you don't have to really ever care about. A lot of them have to do with things like the vertical sync rate or horizontal sync rate of the screen, like how many how many scan lines go by um, in between the end of the screen and the top of the screen and stuff like that. They have to do with basically just getting the screen to fit right on the monitor. Um, so a lot of them you don't need to tinker with. Um, there are just a few that we're going to talk about. So 
number 12, register 12 and 13 are a couple of important ones because they are the address, we'll call it address high and address low. And I'm making a mess of my writing here, but together they form a pointer into this memory over here. So you've got a high byte and a low byte and you put them together and you might notice the high byte comes first, but um, that's just the case with the VDC. You put those together and that forms a pointer over here somewhere into this RAM. So if, this, if these are both zero, it's pointing right to the first location in VDC RAM and that's where it would start out by default. Um, then at R30, Let's see, I need to leave space for R24. We'll come back to that. Then we've got R30 and R31. Okay, 31 is data. And this is the one you actually use to pass data back and forth to this VDC RAM. Okay, um, R30 is account register. We'll talk about what all these do in a bit once we start to demonstrate it. Um, R24 just has one bit that we care about. It's bit seven, and that's a fill or copy bit. That's the only bit in that register that you generally would need to tinker with. And then there's two more, R32 and R33, which are um, copy high and copy low. And they form another address, just like 12 and 13 do. They Together, they are the high and low byte of an address pointer that points over here somewhere. And that gets used when one of the, one of the nice features of the 80-column chip is that it can copy a block of data from one place to another without your processor having to do it byte by byte. You can just tell it, copy this many bytes up to 256, at, uh, yeah, up to 256 at a time. You can just tell it, copy that many from this location to this location, and it just does it. And this thing runs at 16 megahertz, which is 16 times, well, or 8 times the speed of the 8502, depending on which speed you have it in. And so it can do that on its own over here a lot faster than you moving the bytes one by one. All right, so... To do anything to the RAM, you have to go through the registers. You have to talk to the registers, but you can't talk directly to the registers either. You have to talk through these two memory locations in the I.O. block. So you have to talk to the registers and then let the, let the chip then do what it tells you to do, what you told it to do to the RAM, which at this point you decide, heck with this, I'm just going to go back to the 40 column screen because this is way too complicated. And that's generally what they suggest in the books. But if you want to do it, here's how you do it. You have two registers here. D600 is called typically the address register. And D601 is the read, write, or data register. Okay, and you do all your communication with this chip through these two locations. So the way you do that is the address register uses the bytes zero through four as the register number. So we'll say register number there. Bits five and six, we don't care about them. They're, I think six is unused, five is something irrelevant. Bit seven then is the status register. We'll put an S there for status. What this does is when, when you put a register number in here, every time you write a register number to this address, to this location, then the chip then gets that register ready for you, basically. And when that register is ready, it's kind of like then it takes this and points it to that register. When it's ready, then once it's done that, it sets this status bit. And that tells you that then it's okay to go ahead and use this one to either read that register or write to that register. So just as an example, if we write 
if we write 24 in here, well, let's, let's write 12. That's easier. If we write a 12 in here, that looks like that. Then we wait until this gets set. So we just watch. And as soon as this gets set, that means that this location is now pointing at register 12. And if we read from it, then we're reading what's in register 12. If we write to it, we're writing to what's in register 12. So it's kind of like this is sort of a, a traffic traffic cop sort of that's pointing this register. And I'm, it might be confusing because these are registers. These are also registers. But this one, when you put it, when you put a register number in here, which is one of the register numbers in the chip, it acts, like I say, it acts as sort of a, a crossing guard or something. And it points this register then to whichever one you asked for. And it uses the status bit to tell you once that's done, because otherwise you, basically you have to wait. There's no, there's no interrupt in this chip that can tell you when it's ready. And so you just have to keep checking. So to give an example of that in actual code, it's really pretty simple. Um, typically what people do, just kind of convention, let's say we want to read, write this so you can actually see it, read 80. Okay, we'll write a little routine called read 80. Typically what people do is they load X with the register number they want to access and then store that into D600, into the address register there. Then you do a branch if plus back, well, you do a branch if plus back up to here. Oh, no, no, you don't, sorry. Got another step in there, I knew I was missing something. Okay, it's a very short process, but it's not quite that short. Then you do a bit on D600. Now we haven't used the bit instruction very much at all. Maybe not at all. I did explain it in the one video, but I don't know if we've used it at all in any actual programs. Um, what the bit, the bit instruction does a few different things, but the, the thing we care about that it does is it checks that location. And if bit seven is set, it sets or it copies bit seven into the status flag into the status register of the of the 8502 and that happens to be the minus bit in the 8502 status register so once we do this no matter what's in this it just copies you know we don't care about what else is in this we just care about this flag right here and so then we can do a branch if plus back up to here because if this is set, then the bit copies that into the status register, which in the status register, bit seven is the minus sign. And so branching if plus means the minus sign is not set yet. Okay. Once the minus sign gets set, then, or once this gets set, bit will set the minus sign in the status register and this will fall through because it won't be plus anymore. So if this is zero, then that sets up plus in the status register and it just keeps just keeps looping right here. So then to read, we can load A from D601 and then we're done. Oops. And we return the value of this register, whatever it was, in A from our little read 80 routine here. So just to recap that, we load the number of the register that we want to, and really this would be that would not be part of the routine, but when we do this on the computer, it'll, you know, it'll be like this. We'll load, we'll have an, you know, this, this will be our routine and then we'll somewhere else in our code. We'll say, okay, we want to, we want to read from register 12. So we load X with 12 and then we jump to subroutine read 80. And that'll come up here. It'll store the register number in the address register and then start checking that status bit and it just loops right here until that minus bit is set until that bit seven gets set then it falls through because it knows that this has gotten pointed to register 12 now and then it loads the value out of there
which is pulling straight out of register 12. Okay, so that's how you read from one. Writing to one is very similar. In fact, we could just copy most of this, store X into the address register. Again, we're going to check to see whether it is said that it's ready. Branch if plus back up to here. And except this time we're going to store A into D601 and then return. Okay, so this time once this is once this status tells us that it's ready and it's got that register pointed where I you know where we told it to point to then we store a value in here and it gets stored in that register. So now what we can do is we can say, okay, let's say we want to put, um, let's say we want to write something at 0400. And so we load X with 12, we load A with 04, the high bit of 0400, and then we jump to subroutine, write 80. So it's going to load X with 12, load A with 4, store X in the address register, wait right here for the status flag to get set, and then store A, which is 4, in here into the, the data register, and so it ends up in register 12. So that's how you have to do everything that you want to do with the 80-column RAM, is through these registers, talking to them through these two registers. So once you have these two routines in your code, then you use these routines for everything you want to do. So, for instance, let's say we want to put an A on the very first location in the screen. Well, in, you know, in the, on the 40 column screen, you do that like this, load A with one, that's the, the code for A. Store that in 0400, you're done you know, because you have direct access to it. Here we don't. We've got to go through this system. So what we have to do is we have to say, okay, first we've got to tell it where to point to in the screen screen RAM there. So we're going to have to load X. I'm probably going to run out of space here. We're going to load, no, sorry. We've got to load X with the register number, 12. Load A with what we want to put in it, which is zero and call write 80. Jump to that subroutine to write that. So now that's going to put zero here. Then we're going to load X or well, we can just increment X, save us a cycle or two. Increment X so that X is now 13. Load A with zero again and jump to subroutine write. Okay, so now we've called this twice, this whole business here. So now we have zero here and zero here. So now our pointer to, to RAM is pointing right here. Now we can load X with 31, which is the data register. Load A with one, the character that we want to print and jump to right 80. And that's going to take, that's going to set up register 31 so that this is pointing, you know, this is pointing down here, write the one to the data register. And what that register does is anytime you write to it, it takes that value and puts it wherever this, wherever these two are pointing. And so it's going to take that one and stick it right here in the first location on the screen. So this, combined with this, is how you have to write a character to the screen. And this is why we say, you know, this is slower, because you've got, you know, at least, let's see, one, like I said, to write to the 40 column screen, you just load a register with the value and store it at 0400. That's one, two, three, four, five bytes of code. This is one, two, three, four, 
5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Just in the main code, you've got 20 bytes of code. And then over here, you have you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Well, of course, we're only, we're only calling write 80. We're not calling read 80, but you get the idea. There's a lot more code here. Plus, you don't know how many times this loop is going to run every time you call this. So you can't really even know how long it's going to take to do each one. Now, I'm probably making it sound horrible and awful, and it's not that bad. Because for one thing, like I said, this chip does operate at a faster speed, so it's not like it's taking it all day to, to move these pointers around. But it, it does take longer than this. All right. Just to touch a little bit on these other registers that I wrote up here. We won't go into real detail until we're actually coding. But... One of the nice features is that once you've written a character, you can then tell it to fill the next ever the next so many characters. So let's say you did write an A up here and you want to fill in the top with A's. You don't have to keep writing. You don't have to keep saying, okay, move to the next address, write an A, move to the next address, write an A, move to the next address, write an A. You don't have to do that. Because for one thing, this, this register pair is self-incrementing. So every time you write to register 31, it it stores that value in RAM wherever this is pointing, but then it also increments this. So after you do that, this is going to be 1. You know, this is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. And if you write another character, it's going to go there. And so you can keep writing characters and stepping across the screen without having to keep incrementing your address manually. It, it takes care of that for you. The other thing is, if you did want to just say you wanted to just write 80 A's across the top of the screen, you don't have to write 80 times. You write a single A by doing it like we said, and then you write the number 79 into the count register. Every time you write to the count register, it looks at this register right here. It looks at this bit 7 and says, is this to fill or copy? And a 0... A zero means fill, and a one means copy. And by default, it's going to be set to fill. If it's set to fill, then the count tells it how many times to repeat the character that you just wrote. So if you just wrote an A to the first location, and then you write 79 to the count, it goes ahead and, and adds 79 more A's, just proceeding on through memory. So that's another nice feature that if you are filling in Say you're just clearing the screen by filling spaces or um, you're just filling a bunch of locations to fill in a, say, a graphical shape. That is going to be a lot faster than if you had to just, you know, fill each one with store uh, commands. And the other thing is these two registers down here, they form a pointer that points to a source location for when this is set to copy. When this bit 7 of 24 is set to copy or is set, that means copy. And what happens then is if you fill, if you put a number in the count location into 30, it takes that many bytes starting from here and copies them to here. And so that's a way that you can really quickly copy chunks of RAM around. Like I say, if you wanted to have two screens in your game, you could have one of them here and one of them here. Or, well, let's say you just... Let, let's say you have characters, like in, in your game, you have little people or houses or whatever that are made up of characters. You could copy chunks of memory from here up to here to wherever you want to display them. It's kind of hard to describe exactly, but basically that allows you... It would be a lot slower if you had to say, okay, I want to copy 10 bytes from right here up to here. I've got to read one, write it here, you know, read it, write it read it, write it, read it, write it. You don't have to do that. You can say, point this, you know, point this address here, point this address here, and then set the copy bit and write a 10 into the count register, and it just copies 10. All right, so I think that kind of covers the basics. Um, this is the, 
you know, the main thing to understand, like I said, is you can't, you can't talk to this directly. You can't even talk to these directly. You have to talk through these two, um, these two locations and you start out by writing these two things. And then once you have these, then you just use them to say, okay, I want to put, you know, I want to put this value into register 13, or I want to put this value into register 30, whatever it is. And so then you'll wrap these in other routines to do the things you want to be able to do. But it's, this is the base of it. Or this is one of these is going to get called every time you want to read from one of these registers or write to one of these registers. All right. So if you have any questions, um, be sure to ask in the comments and now we'll be ready to start writing some code using these. Thanks for watching.